What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right. Welcome back. We are here in week 18 of Sentinels franchise season number two. Another great season nearing its completion. Boom, boom, boom. I hope you guys are having as much fun as I am in this series and actually hope you're having even more. So high stakes today, guys. High stakes episode here. We are taking on the 2-14 Cleveland Browns. God, I cannot believe they are this bad in this game. And actually, ironically, as I record this, it is Saturday, January 13th, and the Browns just got smoked by the Houston Texans in the AFC wildcard game, 45-14. to CJ Stroud absolutely lit it up. You guys know the Packers are my favorite team, but the Browns are second, so that was a heartbreaker. But... In this uh, season, in this series, in this franchise, I hate the Browns because we're playing them today. Now, getting a look at the playoff picture again because this is the last game of the regular season. We are the seventh seed, so that means win and we are in. All we have to do today is take care of business and win this football game against an apparently bad team, and we're in the playoffs. And actually, I think slight chance if the Giants lose, we would be tied with them. And I believe we have the tiebreaker against them. So maybe a slight chance to even go into the sixth seed. I don't know. But all I care about is winning this football game and getting a look at this highly competitive NFC East, man. I don't know if I've ever seen a division in football this competitive. We're nine and seven and we're in last place. Cowboys, 11 and five. Eagles, 11 and five. Giants, 10 and six. And then us. And we also got to make sure the teams below us. So if we look at the NFC standings here, we're nine and seven and we have five teams that are eight and eight. So if we lose this game and one of these other teams wins, I have no idea what the tiebreakers would come down to. I think the Falcons for sure have the tiebreaker against us, but we really cannot afford to lose this game if we hope to retain a playoff spot. Well, I think I figured out why the Browns are so bad. Deshaun Watson just having an absolutely abysmal season. There will be no happy endings in Cleveland this year as he has more interceptions than touchdowns and hasn't even eclipsed 3,000 yards. And Nick Chubb, I mean, over 1,000 yards is good, but I'm sure in this franchise here in Madden, that's really not great. And they don't have Amari Cooper anymore. That's right. So no receiver really even close to a thousand yards. So that must be why Cleveland's so bad. Nick Chubb, not even at 1200. And if we look at the NFL, I bet you that's not even anywhere close to the top of the ranks. And no, it's not. Brian Robinson too. Also, he, he's, oh, that's Bijan. No, Brian Robinson's there too. 12, 18. So Brian Robinson has more yards than Nick Chubb. And he hasn't even played the last couple games. But taking a look at our boys here, J.J. Ford has the chance to go over 5,000 passing yards this game. And I'm sure he will do that. 33 touchdowns to 21 picks. Not sure if he's still leading the NFL in picks or not. He is. He is. But Zach Wilson not far behind. And Deshaun Watson, maybe he'll chuck uh, three of them today. Who knows? And be leading the NFL. But at least J.J. Ford is not too far you know, uh, in the lead per se in interceptions, Brian Robinson, again, he's out. Dudley Saxon is the new guy. Ever since Brian got hurt, Dudley has stepped up and he, I think might be our future. He just got upgraded to star development and taking a look at our receivers, Terry McLaurin, he has kind of fallen off a cliff these last couple of weeks. Curtis Samuel actually now leading our team in receiving yards. Terry, not far behind. Then of course you got Bart Burns. He should be back. He'll be back if we make the playoffs. I think not in the wild card, but if we somehow advance to the divisional round, I believe he will be there. But our receivers, we got some nice production, especially from our one and two. And then some of these rooks here, Bart Burns and George Williams also having a pretty good season as well. Now, if anybody watched the Madden 23 Cupcake Relocation franchise, you will know that Nick Chubb broke the rushing record on us. <laughs> so really trying to make sure that that ha does not happen again today, but I'm not gonna defend the run because you guys know how I feel about that. I think actually I will, we'll defend the deep pass to start. I think that that's the way to go. And I have been going outside run as my game plan focus, but I really think that, I think JJ4 is gonna have to step up here and have a really good game today. Uh, kind of pick up where he left off 
couple episodes ago, a couple games ago. We're going to do get one interception as our game plan focus because I feel like every time I do that, we get a pick and we want to get as many as we can on Deshaun Watson here today. Got a ton of good upgrades here. JJ Ford, our general under center, is going to be the first one here on the docket. And JJ, we know about his accuracy. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Maybe throw on the run could be a little bit better. So I think throw on the run would be improviser. So we'll give him an upgrade point to improviser. See if we get anything upgraded to that throw on the run. We get plus one and we know he's an X factor drafted a superstar development player. And then he got his development trait upgraded in training camp, which was awesome. And then Dudley here is Dudley. I mean, with Dudley, we're just going to continue to go elusive back because I know that that is going to get his overall up. And we saw Dudley break a lot of tackles last week. We saw him, uh, you know, juke a lot of players. Obviously, he was bent over 100 yards on the ground in the last two games. So we're going to keep pumping upgrades into Dudley, and hopefully he's our guy. Also, Kendall Fuller, he had two picks last week against Pittsburgh, against Pickett. Two picks in Pittsburgh against Pickett. That is alliteration at its finest. One of those puppies was a pick six. So Kendall is, he's super, superstar? Was he? Hold on. Was he always? When did he get upgraded to superstar? When did he get, I do not remember that. Last week, he got a superstar dev upgrade for being defensive player of the week. Whoa. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. A dev upgrade for being player of the week? Oh my goodness. So now we have a superstar development corner on our hands. That is absolutely crazy. So what should we give Kendall? Uh, generally react much faster to cut moves. I mean, I feel like outside shade and inside shade. If he's in man coverage, I feel like he would do better in both of those categories. And then obviously we need the pick artist uh, or ac is acrobat can't do acrobat yet. We'll do pick artist. And wow, I can't how I don't know how I missed that one heading into this game. We have caught the injury bug. No doubt. Two of our defensive linemen are down Dante Fowler and Chase Young, Brian Robinson, of course. And then Bart Burns actually would be back for the wild card round, assuming that we make it. And the Browns, they aren't missing really anybody key. So they're going to be pretty much at full strength. I don't care what their record says. I've played the Browns in Madden many, many times. We're going to be on the road at Cleveland Brown Stadium when and we are freaking in. If you guys are excited to see us make the playoffs, please like this video. Subscribe to the channel. I'm almost at 700 subscribers at 750. I will do an NFL jersey giveaway to you guys. So please help my channel grow. But without further ado, guys, this is a must-win game to get into the playoffs. Let's get down to frigid Cleveland Brown Stadium in Cleveland and get ready for the game. Offense started out hot last week against Pittsburgh. We went up 21-0, and unfortunately, we did let the Steelers climb back into the game. But ultimately, we won, and it was because of that gent right there, Dudley Saxton. But this gent right here, a lot of gentlemen on our team. This gent right here, I think, is going to have to have a big game today. Surely he will go over 5,000 yards, but got to make sure we don't do the dumb mistake and the dumb turnover. Because, again, I I don't care how good Cleveland's re or how bad, I should say, Cleveland's record is. Their roster is stacked and they're a tough team to play against. They got Miles Garrett over there on the right side. So definitely don't want to be running it uh, his way for sure. I think we'll pick up where we left off last week with the, oh, and I forgot to change the run. <laughs> Got to make sure I audible. I meant to audible it away from Miles Garrett. Completely forgot. I set my blocking and everything, but the one thing that I did forget to do was the most important thing, which was make Dudley run to the left. So that one is all on me. Speaking of Dudley, let's put him on a wheel. I'm going to come out shotgun with three wide receivers to our right one player that hasn't really been getting involved lately is terry mclaurin and i look for him to have a big game today first and ten here we'll come out i form with a little curl concept on the field speaking of terry nice curl route ran by him see i don't need to i when it comes to terry i always feel like i'm looking for the deep shot looking for the deep bomb which he he's good at that he's great at that beating his man on press things of that nature but he's also a very good route runner too so nothing wrong with you know, just 
picking up safe, short completions like that, like we just saw there on the curl route. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, at all. So here we go. First and 10 single back going to be Dudley Saxton on the carry. Dudley weaving his way through blockers for a nice pickup of seven. We're going to try outside zone again out of the pistol. Got my blocking set up just the way I want it. Dudley has the speed. Jeremiah Uwusu Koromoa could not make the tackle who in today's game against the Texans, he was about the only player that showed up. I don't know if you guys watched that game or not, but man, oh man, Joe Flacco's magic kind of ran out. And speaking of Terry getting pressed, we're testing it on this one here. Definitely going to do it. Hope he can beat his man on said press. Nice defense there by MJ Emerson. Still think it was a good idea. Ball's on the 34-yard line, so almost into Joey Sly field goal range here. And JJ, he's going to throw it away. We had uh, pressure there in the backfield. Unfortunately, Zadarius Smith was chasing after us. And it's one thing about JJ, man. He's he's not the uh, not the fastest cat in the litter. That much is for sure. Not even close, as a matter of fact. So, you know, if that was somebody like uh, good old Damon Sanders, huh? what do you guys know about Damon Sanders? We might have picked it up. So gotta we're in adversity now. Got to be quiet here, focus. Coming out vertical, and we are going to let Terry cook. That was nearly intercepted there by Jelani Tavai. And the question is, yeah, we can kick this field goal with Sly here. 51-yarder should not be an issue. I have definitely stepped my game up on the kicks. Again, going back to the Cupcake Relocation franchise, if you guys watched that series, I was cheeks in every form of the definition. I was ass. At my field goals and uh, you know i'm not really asked now matter of fact i was looking at the stats pre-game and i think that joey sly is in the leader i'll show you guys in the off season the yearly awards i think joey sly is in line to get best kicker and i've only missed two field goals all season which for me is pretty good so kevin stefanski giving deshaun watson a good old talk here not gonna see joe flacco in this one and i mentioned it pre-game Watson with more picks than touchdowns and not even at the 3,000 yard mark, but he is playing the last ranked defense in the league. That is the St. Louis Sentinels. So it doesn't matter. Stats, throw them out the window. Does not matter at all because right now we just have to focus. We got a job to do. Got to watch this man here, Nick Chubb. He's always dangerous and always a threat. Picks up seven on his opening carry. Watson coming out single back. Going to give it to Chubb. No, it's going to actually be a play fake. And there's, I think, is that Harrison Bryant? They don't have Harrison Bryant anymore. That's Shane Zilstra. First and 10 here. Ball is on the 36. We'll see if Watson goes to Chubb here. He will. Chubb trying to put the moves on. Sentinels did converge on him after a gain of four. And I, look, comment down below if you did watch the Madden 23 Cupcake relocation franchise and you did see nick chubb break the rushing record on us that was not fun didn't have a good night that night don't want to see that happen again it's going to be a play fake this time and watson has his tight end zilstra open again we saw a tight end carve us up last week in pat fryermuth don't really want to see that happen again today all right watson and the boys moving pretty good here i would say so oh god he might have just cooked us there no he overthrew his receiver Terrell Goodwin who is another rookie out of Middle Tennessee State all right big one here guys third and three we're going nickel blitz we're sending Justin Hayward he's almost there almost got home to Watson but he got it off to Chubb in the nick of time that was a good screen pass that was a good screen pass good call by Stefanski Kevin uh, Kevin Stefanski does call the plays in Cleveland as you see him there with the play sheet but that was we almost nearly nearly got home there with Watson, but unfortunately, we could not. New set of downs here. Got to be careful. Got to make sure Watson. Oh, nice sack there by KJ Henry, the former Clemson Tiger, who had a pick last game. Yes, you heard me correctly. Defensive end with a pick. That was awesome. All right, need some good coverage here. Second and 15. We got the Browns behind the stick, so we'll see what Watson decides to do. He's going for it all. Pass intended there for uh, Jalen Darden. But it was off the mark, and now, defense, we really need you to step up here. We're coming out in our dime package. We're guessing pass, and we're shading inside here and just hoping and praying that either pressure can get home 
or we could just have some good lockdown coverage. And it is pressure. Khalil Mack and somebody else almost, almost. No, he did go, did go to Watson. What am I talking about? I'm sorry. My cats are over here fighting and they really just distracted me from that play. So I'm going to go throw them out of my office now. All right, I'm back. Just had to chase two cats out of my office here. Shout out to cats. Never, they're never calm when you want them to be, you know, you're trying to go to sleep and they're messing with you and stuff like that. And then throughout the course of the day, when you're up and about, they're just passed out, not doing anything, being lazy. So anyways, I can't, I laser focus, locked in laser focus today. I cannot have anything messing me up. Three, three is the scoreboard, but a couple sacks on that last defensive drive on Watson. Really, really great to see Dudley. Oh, nice move from Dudley. Finally. A decent kick return, getting it to the 30. Board starting out two of six. So not really the best uh, offensive showing from him, but game is still early. J.J. Ford, we know how good he is. We know that he leads the league in passing yards. So he just needs a little bit of time. Second and 10 here from the 30. Coming out shotgun, and we're going to lay this thing out for Logan Thomas, who catches it. And Miles Garrett is going to exit the game. So that is not good. If you're a Cleveland fan, which I hope you guys aren't, at least not in this Madden universe. Coach says draw play to Saxton. That seems like a good idea to me, especially seeing as how Miles Garrett just exited the game. So hopefully we could pick this up and keep this drive moving. Dudley should get it with ease. And he has the jukes. Oh, man. Dudley is just so fluid on the field. Brian Robinson, that's the one thing. He doesn't really have those juke moves. But with Dudley, it's like quick flick of the analog stick man i got bars today with the quick flick of the analog stick he's breaking a browns player's dicks i don't know <laughs> i don't got bars man i don't got bars actually i do uh if you're so curious you can also youtube cj smalls and i used to rap back in the day yes you heard me Correctly, I'll let you guys uh, go down the rabbit hole and find that one out. So first and 10 here, we're coming out shotgun. Who's going to get open? I think it's McLaurin. No, I think it's actually almost a pick there by Chuck Clark, the safety. Third and long upcoming here. So hopefully one of these players can get open. I think we're going to have Dudley block for us and maybe McLaurin on this little in route or somebody else. Yes, I think he beat his man on press. Oh, my God. He did beat his man on press, but the reaction time for Martin Emerson was just so good. Good defense. Just have to uh, say good job and, you know, nothing we can really do about that. So, Tressway going to punt this ball back here, and I did not even attempt to angle that to the sideline. So, here comes Watson for drive number two for the Browns. We'll send some pressure here with Hayward again on the nickel blitz here. See, it's going to be a, a run to Chubb and just amazing blocks. We know the Browns' offensive line is very good. Wyatt Teller and Jack Conklin, Joel Batonio and the boys, Ethan Posich, the center. I thought we were had a chance to get Chubb in the backfield there, but he was. they were able to seal the edge. Chubb picked up a big one. So, the end of the first quarter, 3-3 three, three is your score. Haven't really been able to get it going in the passing game like I had hoped, but still a ton of football left, and I'm sure if anybody can figure it out, it's J.J. Ford, so hopefully he can do that. Uh, first and 10 here, ball close to midfield. Watson coming out, pistol, has, of course, Nick Chubb behind him, so got to be cognizant that it could be a run. It's not going to be, and he is going to dump that one off to his receiver there, Jalen Darden. For a pickup of seven. I think we man up here. Going to have uh, uh, eyes on Chubb. I'm controlling Justin Hayward. But it is a play fake. And that's what the freak I get. Because that was my man. That was my man. That was Justin Hayward's responsibility. And I kind of shaded him over to the right side a little bit. Thinking that it might be a Nick Chubb run. And Shane Zilstra looking like the second coming of Darren Waller out here. As he's been Watson's really favorite target. And now the Browns got this thing all the way to the 10-yard line. So got to be really careful here, guys. Got to be really careful indeed. Hopefully, we can get those sacks going again. And that is going to be another pickup by Darden. But this time, Cam Curl was there to meet him for a loss of one. I'm continuing to go pressure here because I liked what I saw on the first drive. But Nick Chubb probably going to score with ease. I think we got him on the one. We did stop Nick Chubb on the run. Now, this is a time where they like to go zero wide receivers, but this time they're not. They're actually coming out gun. 
and I'm going to be a little risky, and I'm just going to kind of send the house at him. I know, probably not the smartest of decisions, but I'm going to do it anyways. Hopefully, it pays off. Probably not going to. Oh, it's a breakup. Yes. Pass breakup by Kwan Martin. And we'll see if Stefanski goes for it. Fourth and inches from the one. They are going to go for it, which uh, I'm not super happy about that. I'm going to go 60 out Jack's blitz. Got to figure, I mean, this this has to be a run to Chubb, right? Well, it has to be. Fourth and inches. Now, as I say that, he's probably changing the play. Right now, it's audible to a pass. Or, yes, he is. But it's a pick. It's a pick. Who was that? Who was that? That was Benjamin St. Juiced. And even if he, I think he kept his feet in bounds. It looked like it. What a play for St. Juice, who just got an upgrade pre-game, by the way. I was uber aggressive on both of those calls and sent pressure. There's number 25. Let's see if he uh, did, in fact, keep his feet in bounds. I, I mean, if we're going by Madden graphics and uh, Madden, oh, I don't know. And this is a huge one, too, because if they overturn this, we're going to get the ball on the inch yard line. No booth review, so the pick is good. So how about that clutch indeed, as the Browns were definitely about to score on that one. So we get the ball from the 20. So let's go ahead and uh, get some points on the board. Can we maybe do that? I swear to God, MJ Emerson is looking like prime champ Bailey out there. He is guarding everything that I tried to throw to that left side and you know what i think it's time we got to go pa cross single back x bunch nasty this is the time to do that right now got to we haven't done really diddly squat in this game and the defense has been great so we know this one should pay off and it will curtis not going to be able to juke Juan thornhill there but i just had i had to do that i had to do that it was the perfect time and it pays off as we get the ball past midfield. And this one looks like a outside zone to me. Need some good blocks. I think we got him. We know Dudley has the speed, of course, to turn that corner. Dudley starting out five rushes for 43 yards. Harry getting pressed again, man. But MJ Emerson has just been the dude. We'll see uh, how it plays out. Uh, we're going to go Logan Thomas in the middle of the field. Better decision. I got to quit flirting with the disaster, man. I got to get the freaking devil off my shoulder because they're showing press, but I feel like MJ Emerson wants me to go press. I feel like he's he's begging me to go press, so maybe I shouldn't go press. I don't know. First and goal. This is our best drive by far. Let's see if we can pay this thing off with some points. Are they going to give me grounding for that? I swear I was outside the tackle box. They are going to give me grounding. I mean, what do you do when you have Miles Garrett coming at you full speed? Second and goal here. Now we're back to the 22-yard line. So moving in the wrong direction. Terry hangs on and gets in the end zone. Oh, my God, Terry. Did we need that? And did Terry need that? Because he's, like I said, he's been on the downward spiral lately. And that was a tough throw. Tight window. It was that good old gun verticals out of the trips that you guys see the coach call for me all the time that and te attack those two plays and i show you guys all the time that the coach calls those so worked on that one and finally we're able to strike into the end zone i could easily see this being a run too it's third and four we're gonna have jamin davis blitz and hopefully oh we got pressure again and nice defense there by hayward the combined effort of jamin davis and justin hayward jamin started the thing out with the pressure he made watson uh release that thing you know before he wanted to and then Justin Hayward, our rookie middle linebacker that we converted to outside linebacker, was there to get the pass breakup. So good team effort there from the Sentinels. Okay, this time we are going to run it towards Miles Garrett. I hate to do it, but the hole does look pretty big there. And I guess I should have ID'd up that linebacker there as the mic. But Dudley was able to pick up to hindsight's 2020. I probably should have ID'd up that linebacker as the mic and then probably had, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It sucked. Okay. It sucked. Second and eight here. We're going to come out curls again out of the I form. Just going to check it down to our tight end, John Bates, who is now a fullback. He wasn't able to get anything. This drive not going well. That was actually Nick Muse. Wow. Okay. Big third down here. Chance to capture a lot of momentum. We're going to send Terry right up the seam. 
Maybe have uh, Thomas or Samuel as well. I think it might be Terry and MJ Emerson. Wow. Give this man his flowers. Martin freaking Emerson Jr., the third-year corner in this game out of Mississippi State. He is playing Terry tough. I mean, all these passes that I am airing out to Terry uh, seem to be the right decision. I don't know. Maybe I could just be the worst Madden player of all time, but I just feel like Martin Emerson, is his reaction time is so great, and that would have been clutch to go up by 17 or at least 13 to 3. Unfortunately, we're not going to do it, so need the defense to continue playing the way that they have been here in this one so far. So Watson coming out single back, three receivers bunched up to his right. Oh, we had a chance to trip up Nick Chubb, and he has the speed there, already at 70 rushing yards, five for 70, second and three. See what Watson does here. We'll see where he goes and tried to air it out there for his tight end Najoku, but it was just a little bit too far. This is where the Sentinels have earned their keep today because we have been playing pretty good on these third downs and have been able to get them off of the field. So let's see if we can do that again. It's going to be a screen to Chubb. I'm there to read it with KJ Henry. I knew the, the way that I saw Nick Chubb kind of freeze, pause, and turn his body. I knew that it was going to be a screen pass. Luckily, I was already usered on KJ Henry. Well, it's not Dustin Hopkins in this one like it is in real life. It's uh, Cade York, who Browns fans know all about Cade York. We cut him after practice, and he's going to drill that one. So good job by Cade York, the former LSU Tiger. And now we get a chance to see the Sentinels operate in a two-minute drill. I like draw play to Dudley on this first uh, first play here. Don't need to do anything crazy. We're, we have two minutes to go. We got all of our timeouts. Just need to pick up some positive yards. Dudley, oh, those jukes are deadly, man. I'm going to start calling him Deadly Saxton because those jukes are pretty deadly indeed. And uh, again, much more fluid. I love Brian Robinson. He's a dude. He is a dude. But the jukes from Dudley are much more fluid here. A minute 30 to go. Got to score some points. We're just going to go underneath to Curtis Samuel here, and he will move the chains. Don't mind killing clock here because if we score, don't want to give the Browns enough time. This is going to be another outsides. Oh, God, we have no blockers there. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and call our first timeout. Again, they're begging me to press, man. They're begging me to press. We're going to go play fake here. Play action might have Logan Thomas or... Terry, um, we're just going to go to Logan Thomas, but we can't get there as it bounces off the freaking dome piece of Andrew Wiley. All right, guys, we are going to our patented TE attack here. Hopefully we can just get a good enough block on Garrett and it's impossible to do that. So offense is tough in this one, man. Tough indeed. Defense is playing good. I will give him that, but Browns secondary, especially Martin Emerson and of course, their uh, front four with Miles Garrett, Zadarius Smith, and those boys. It's hard to really get anything going on them. I will be the first to admit here. So, I don't know. Uh, Browns will get the ball back after halftime as well. And Justin Hayward goes down. Let's just not let them score in 33 seconds. Going to stick with the blitz. I feel like that's the only thing that has really worked so far in this one. Cody Bar, oh, There it is. Yes. Quan Martin with the sack. And we're just going to let this thing tick, man. We're going to let this thing tick. Last week against Pittsburgh, it was kind of hard, although we didn't really try too much to pass with J.J. Ford. We are outpassing the Browns in this one, but I just feel like, aside from that one drive where uh, Terry scored, it's been tough to really get anything going, and Dudley's not running. You know what? I think I'm going to go back to our secret weapon. We're going to change our focus to run outside because that is what worked so well last time. And I'm going to stay on defend the deep pass because, or should I, uh, uh, yeah, we're going to stay on defend the deep pass. Nick Chubb, man, got to find a way to stop this guy. He's, Watson really hasn't done too much in this game, but Nick Chubb certainly has. And Justin Hayward apparently got injured uh, sometime before the second half, and he will not return. So that is very, very unfortunate indeed. Let's see what Watson does coming out of single back here. Got to watch David and Joku. I'm usering my man on him, and that's a nice completion there by Darden for a pickup of seven. The Browns have given us tons of chances in this one, and we just haven't capitalized. Our defense, luckily, is playing good, but our offense hasn't been able to capitalize. It's going to be a play fake. Watson, can we get a nice breakup? We cannot. 
Elijah Moore just absolutely dogged us. <laughs> High pointed that ball from Watson. He came down with it. Now he's trash talking. That was a huge pickup for Cleveland. Gonna try to go blitz here with Jamin Davis. It's first and 10. Watson has two receivers to his left, Nick Chubb to his right. So can the pressure get home? It cannot. And David Njoku going to get very close to scoring. Remember, the Browns were in this position earlier in the game, and we were somehow able to stop them. But that might have been uh, kind of fluky. Don't know if we'll be able to do that a second time or not. So we'll see what Watson does. This time he... Going to go to Darden, but it's a nice pass breakup. Now Cleveland going zero wide receivers here, so we're just going to hope that it's like a fullback dive or something like that, or at least a run up the gut from Chubb. It is going to be a run up the gut from Chubb, but Chubb is just too good. And for the first time today, Cleveland takes the lead because we just squandered so many opportunities on our previous drives, and now we're going to have to play from behind. Pressure starting to mount a little bit, as remember, this is a win and we are in game. I want to win, and I want to be in. It's tough to really get anything going. We're going to have to get something going here. So let's see if we can do it. Curtis Samuel on a nice little delayed route. He's fighting forward, getting very close to the sticks, able to pick up about nine. And now it's a third and one here. So what do we do in this situation? I think that he's got to trust Dudley to trust that he can pick up one yard. We're going to come out of the pistol for this one too and hopefully Saxton can just power forward and pick up the first down which he does thank you Dudley keeping our drive alive here living to fight another down forward now just barely over 50 percent completion about an ant's pubic hair over a 50 percent completion okay don't know if ants even have pubes or not but if they do that is Dudley or uh, JJ's completion percentage gonna check it down to Saxon make a man miss he's not able to make uh, Greg Newsom miss on that one and only picking up two hoping one of these slants can get open here we're gonna come out I form and see what these linebackers do I don't like anything that's happening right now but Logan Thomas just saved my life on that one because it wasn't even really a good read I feel like man slants used to be slants used to be so overpowered you guys remember like in madden 22 slants were so overpowered they definitely nerfed them it's third and two this is definitely a uh, go for it four down territory here so if we don't get this knock john bates what are you doing oh my god it has to be draw play man have to be confident that dudley can pick this up please please pick it up he's not gonna we're going to turn the ball over on downs. I can't believe John Bates couldn't haul that pass in. And I did make, you know, running outside my focus after halftime. So, of course, naturally, it's going to be harder to run it inside because Madden is dumb. We all know that. Turning it over on downs. Just can't seem to find any semblance of an offense here. But Jonathan Allen finding some semblance of defense, dropping Nick Chubb for a loss of two. And now it's just time, guys. Play good defense. Play good defense. Get the Browns off the field. We're guessing pass. We're shading inside here. David Njoku's going to be open on this. Oh, God. What is going on here? Okay. I'm slowly starting to uh, see my life flash before my eyes as Jalen Darden picks up a huge gain. Browns looking like they're probably going to score on this drive here. And uh, I just don't know why offense has been so tough. In this game here, need a turnover or something. Not going to get it. Nick Chubb to the outside. We know he's deadly over there. Quan Martin, Jartavius Quan Martin stops him. But I don't see any world where the Browns just don't score on this. I don't see any world where they don't score. We're going to audible into pressure just because I don't know what else to do. Nick Chubb probably going to punch this in. Not even going to be Chubb. As a matter of fact, somebody get eyes on Watson, and he fumbled it. Somebody pick up this gosh dang ball. I mean, tell me. Watson fumbled it. Watson fumbled it. Didn't he? He did. And Cody Barton is literally, you can't even see the ball. Know why? Because Cody Barton's nutsack is on it. Bruh. And how did a Sentinel player not pick that up? That is a, that, that was the turnover that we needed. 
right there. If we could somehow limit, limit them to a field goal, that would be huge. And I would have to think that Stefanski would kick the field goal if we did. And just it's because it's Nick Chubb. I, I'm so mad now that we did not recover that fumble that uh, I'm literally seeing red. I'm seeing red here. Not a good feeling. Brown's going to score. Surely, which they do. Okay. So game on. I get one more play off here as a matter of fact, and it might be a good one. I kind of like Jahan if he can get open it's gonna be tight coverage and not gonna work there but just decided to take a shot maybe i shouldn't have but here we go guys it is the fourth quarter we are down by 10 defense has played good but the offense hasn't been helping them out have not been rewarding our uh defensive efforts with points and i think that we're gonna well we're, we're gonna need to do that there's there's no doubt about that so it's for a second and 10 here and we are on the 36 yard line so if we don't score here a touchdown, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I need Terry to do something, please. Terry caught it. Wow. Okay. Great coverage by Denzel Ward. But Terry McLaurin is built different. I try to get this outside run going, man. That worked so well last week in Pittsburgh. But having Miles Garrett there is just a problem. And now arguably our best offensive lineman, Brandon Scherf, is going to go down to the turf. And that's... Not what you want to see, as it's already difficult to run in this one, and now it might be a little harder losing our right guard. So got to make something great happen. Jahan Dotson, open. There we go, baby. Get out of bounds. Not going to risk a fumble. Now we're into the red zone. Brandon Scherf won't even come back. So enter Ricky Stromberg, who uh, was our starting center last year. Hasn't played too much this year, but this is a big one. J.J. Ford has his... Dots X Factor activated, which you always like to see. And I'm just not allowed to throw to John Bates anymore because he can't catch a freaking ball. Coach says PA cross single back. It's not the X bunch nasty. This is the set that I have big six foot nine George Williams in. So maybe it's an end zone shot to George or something like that, which it might be. And George hangs on. George Williams with the soft hands. It was good coverage, too. I'm telling you, this Browns, look, this was not the Browns secondary that was playing today in the wild card game against Houston. Let me tell you what, because them boys got cooked up, but they're playing really good in this one. But George with the soft hands there, and that is the first signs of life that our offense has seen in quite a while. Now, we need our defense to play like they have been pretty much all game, get a nice stop here. We might have a chance to go down, score, take the lead. Now, this is where Nick Chubb really scares me. This is where he really scares me. It is going to be a Chubb run. Sentinels are there, but Chubb did pick up a good one. Now it's going to be third and two, and we got to find a way. Our defense just has to, has to step up here, guys. I don't know if it's pressure. Pressure is going to be the answer, or if it's just good lockdown coverage. I don't really care. But something, something has to give. We got to get the ball back here. I feel like we cannot let Cleveland, and it's going to be Nick Chubb. If he's not gashing you on the run, he's coming out of the backfield as a receiver. I mean, how do you even stop this guy? <laughs> got to be heavy pressure here. It's got to be heavy pressure here. Hopefully some of it can get home. It won't. It's going to be Jalen Darden, who has been like freaking, I don't even know, Amari Cooper doesn't even matter that Amari Cooper's gone. You know why? Because they got Jalen Darden. Guess pass shade outside because I feel like they've been going through these outside routes a lot. It's going to be Chubb this time. And luckily, Jonathan Allen or James Smith Williams and Jonathan Allen. James Smith Williams has played really good. He's kind of kind of emerged this season. And I like it. I like it a lot. So pressure again. Can it get home? Cody Barton, I need you to play good coverage in the middle of the field, please. And that is going to be Watson taking off. Fumble it again, please. Needed Watson to fumble. He didn't. And now the Browns are almost into the red zone. I don't know, guys. I do not know. Uh, need to hold him to a field goal. That's that's really what this thing comes down to. Or Watson, he's been looking to run a lot. Need him to fumble. But right now, somebody just tackle him. Browns are starting to figure it out here. They're just playing good football. What can you really say? Jamin Davis going to come on a blitz. It was getting home in the first half, not getting home in this one. And David Njoku going to score. 
and this one is going to be extremely tough to come back from. All right, guys, only five minutes to go down by 10, so we cannot be piddle dicking around here. Got to get some yards, and we got to get them fast. That's a nice start from Jahan Dotson. All three timeouts, if we score, depending on what the, uh, what the clock looks like, maybe we will have to onside kick it. Not 100% sure as we're not there yet, but right now, just got to score a touchdown. If we don't score a touchdown here, uh, that's ball game. Terry open on the curl on the slant route. Where was this offense at all, all day? Where was it at all day? Because I haven't seen it. It's definitely a good drive. I am liking it a lot here. Let's see. Oh, God, it's Terry again. Room to roam. Terry starting to come alive in this one. So is J.J. Ford. And we are virtually taking no time off of this clock, which I am a just a huge fan of. Like it, love it, want some freaking more of it. And right now, I want Terry to go on another slant. He's been cooking cooking people on his routes as of late might be doing it again the st louis savior that was why did it take this long to engineer a drive like that i do not know and we didn't take hardly any time off of the clock scored a touchdown but now it's up to our defense who really had a tough day at the office on their last drive they were playing good in the first half but last drive it was tough for the boys Gonna need them to step up here. Yeah, Nick Chubb has been a problem. No doubt about that. Nick Chubb has been a problem. And we'll see. Uh, very curious to see if the Browns go into uh, just kind of like run, chew clock mode with Nick Chubb, or if they actually try to have a passing game. Right now, it looks like they're gonna be, well, nope, it's gonna be, oh my God, dude. Terrell Goodwin, the rookie. Okay, now you got to figure it's probably a Nick Chubb run, so I'm going to just assume that it is. It is, and nice defense there by the Sentinels. Limiting Nick Chubb to three is not easy to do at all. Let's see what Watson does here in the shadows of the two-minute warning. Will he snap this ball? He will, and we, oh, wow, <laughs> drop there by Jalen Darden, who has been having a great game. This is the opportunity that we need right here, guys. This is the opportunity that we need. We're guessing pass. We're shading inside. Have to get the Browns off the field here. No doubt about it. Because if we don't, it's going to be very difficult for us. So please need a great defensive stand. Not going to get it. It's a good one again. And that uh, might be all she wrote. Not saying that it is or it isn't. Just saying that it might be. Unless we can hold them to a field goal. Or if Watson fumbles it. He didn't fumble it, but only pickup of one. I'll take it. Probably going to be a Nick Chubb run too. So I'm going to use her cam curl the safety just in case. And look at Quan Martin. Okay. So not out of it yet. It's third and 12. Definitely not out of it yet. And when defense is in a good position as this would also be a really long field goal as well. And they're also coming out in a running type of formation. So if this is a run, I feel confident that we can stop it, which it looks like it will be. And we do stop it. Actually not going to call a timeout here either because we need to save one. They can let this clock tick down. And this is a long field goal too from Cade York. Not confident he will make this. We'll see if he can, and he is going to miss it. He's going to miss it. Sentinels in position to take this lead, score, and get out of Cleveland Brown Stadium with a steal. JJ's got his dots X Factor activated too, so uh, we just need some time in this pocket. Hopefully, we can hit somebody. I think it's Dotson. It is Dotson. Clock is ticking. I'm aware. It's okay. I'm not going to go hurry up. I don't necessarily need to yet. Might have to think about doing that soon, but not right now. Let's put Samuel on a drag. Don't really want to go to overtime either uh, if we don't have to. That one was close. All right. Terry has been cooking on this play here. Hopefully he can keep that going he might actually be able to he does we're gonna run up to the line and we're gonna clock it here got one timeout left 
chance to get in the end zone and come away with this victory. Still got one timeout, so it's okay. We're going TE attack here and gonna hopefully be able to roll out and find Logan Thomas. We did, gonna call a timeout. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, ball on the six yard line. They want me to kick a field goal. I may have to, but we're gonna at least try one shot to the end zone here. I don't wanna go to overtime, guys, I don't. So let's just pick this up, please, and not have to worry about it. It's Logan Thomas, let's go! Let's freaking go. If you can't tell, your boy is hyped. And I hope that you guys are hyped too. This has been a game. This is our season. And it has been a game. And barring something unforeseen. Okay. Barring something unforeseen. We are going to get out of here like we stole something. As long as nothing dumb happens. Which it could. Not saying that it couldn't. We're gonna win this game, guys. And we're gonna go to the playoffs. Missed them last year, just barely. And I mean, okay. That was a game. If I ever played one. Sentinels make the epic comeback. 31-27. Cade York missed that field goal. And that allowed us to have a pretty short field. JJ Ford, no picks. Four touchdowns. Got off to a shaky start. But this is the JJ Ford that we know and love. 344 through the air. Deshaun played good too. No discredit to him. Dudley, he kind of cooled off. Okay. He kind of cooled off. Nick Chubb did Nick Chubb type of things. But the reemergence of Terry McLaurin, he is back, baby. He had a very Terry, very scary Terry game. Jalen Darden cooked us. Logan Thomas, game-winning touchdown. Give this man a game ball. Defensively, Cody Barton had a sack and a half. We had lots of sacks in this one. Browns had none. And I hope you guys are ready for playoff football. Not offseason, not here yet. We got some more games to go. Sentinels are going to be new to the playoffs again. Missed them last year. Just barely. I think we finished 8-9, and nine, I want to say. So they just missed the playoffs, but we are going to make them now. And it, it couldn't have came at a more, in, in more Sentinels slash CJ Small slash Madden fashion. I mean, I was ready to uh, throw in the towel on that one, guys. JJ needs to uh, continue to go improviser, which didn't get... Two improviser upgrades did not get him an overall, so that kind of sucks. Cody Barton gets a much-deserved upgrade. We're going to go run stopper just to keep him as a scheme fit. That'll get him up to a 78, playing down to a 75 with morale. And uh, Sam, a bunch of offensive line upgrades, which is nice because you never see those in Madden hardly. That was not an easy game at all, guys. One new injury, too. That's going to be Justin Hayward, I think it is. No, Brandon Scherf. I mean, look at these injuries. We do get Bart Burns back next week, which is nice. But we have definitely caught the injury bug. Now, the question is, who are we going to see in the wild card round? We're going to go ahead and advance to the next week here. And I just 10 and 7, great season. Are we the seventh seed or are we the sixth seed? We're taking on the Carolina Panthers. Okay, so Carolina Panthers beat us not too long ago. And we're actually the sixth seed. Okay, so the Giants must have lost. We jumped them. And that's great because I, I would not have wanted to play the Niners. That game against the Panthers, that's the one that went to overtime. And I lost, but it was a, it was a good game still. And I feel confident that we can maybe take down the Panthers and advance to the divisional. So... I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I sure did. That is going to do it for me tonight. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.